celestial mat landmarks, in the words of Luce Glorian, Hundred Minds, the scholar. Do you feel a kinship with the stars? You owe your everything to them. Perhaps one day, even your freedom. I chased the stars across the river of my genealogy until they led me here. I demanded they explain to me the paradox of knowledge. For how is it that something can be shared, but still contained within ourselves in its entirety? The stars did not respond, but set me on a quest. I sought the nine landmarks which they revealed to me, so that someday I would reveal their mysteries to you. These landmarks, emissaries of the stars, are nine lenses through which we see the land and see ourselves in a new light. The Ridge of Gaul the serpent titan Gandroth turned to brittle stone not long after his death. Of that, you may be certain. What remains is a flat, elevated basin that stands us, stands us closer to the heavens. Upon the fallen Gandroth's hide, the stars themselves alight, and you shall know you stand on sacred ground. We set the metal sigils, lit the candle flames, and we emblazoned on the rock-like forms the sigil of our passage to and from this land. And then? And then the stars themselves, they did reply to us. They sang, shining bright, their voices loud and clear. We understood their cadence, and we knew how often to return. The Spring of Jamur. I oft times think the carapace of the hive titan Bialantheus shall be an everlasting blemish on an almost splendid bit of land, but Jamur in his brashness filled the monster with a certain flare. Then the moon shone through the ridges of the massive carapace, and shined upon the pooling ichor, turning it into the freshest nectar ever to be tasted. The spring shall flow eternally, and those who walk within it shall experience the resplendent glory of the land. The stars began to fall there in the spring, with regularity, and we now know how soon again they shall do so, and we wish for you to see it for yourself. The Cairn of Haub. How ironic that the shattered remnants of the bone titan Shaq's six shoulders, which once stood vigilant over the archway into flagging hands, remain now as, a for as forbidding as when the horde monster still possessed unnatural life. After little Haub dispatched the bone titan in a feat of ingenuity, Shaq's pieces fell onto the valley floor, forming a set of standing stones which Haub marked. Further, traces of the titan's glacial blood coagulated into perfect frozen drops, which still shimmer in the darkness. Six shoulders seems to start reanimating when the stars above him dance a certain way. Paint the sigil then in the shining light. The Pit of Meleth If there is one celestial landmark in which I would never again wish to tread, unless, of course, the stars beseech me to it, it has to be that damned pit. "'Twas dark in there beyond all reckoning. "'If not for Melith's sorceress lantern, "'all of us, we would all have been lost. "'What lies within the pit is not to be invoked, "'although I have no doubt our goodly underking "'shall be unable to prevent himself "'from boasting of how Melith sealed it there "'for an entire age. "'The thing yet lies there, on the edge of death. "'Through its connection to the stars, "'it gives the pit significance. "'Walk there with courage and a steady mind. "'The Hulk of Ores.' The Dazraban was first of many river ships to vanish into the downside, although presumptuous of its loss were not inaccurate. The doomed ship and her valiant crew had charted half the Sea of Solis ere the end of their brave voyage. The sea-tightened, unfathomed Plurnes was not fond of the vessel sullying her sea and split the doomed ship with a single swipe. The ship's own shattered prow would later end the sea Titan's cruel reign, as the boastful underking loves to recount. The stars themselves must have, moved, must have been moved by this, that point within the sea, now sacred, as the stars dancing in homage every now and again. The Isle of Kaelmer. The traitor Kaelmer rope collar, whereas he brought upon about our emperor's empire's fall, whereas he nearly claimed the life of our dear Solium, we forgive him. We have forgiven him. We have a certain thanks to him. For he has played a vital part in the star's plan. If not for him, then we, the eight, would never have aligned. We never found the rope collar. He fled into the sea, towards an isle, which we know well to avoid. Twas there we think that Kalmer's tattered mantle finally did him in, among the wild imps. Should the stars ever converge above that isle, it shall be to signify that their long dance across the skies is drawing to a close. The Nest of Trieste 
The ashen effigy of the nightmare titan Zylvia's horse-headed looms as dark as ever on the precipice of Black Basin, where her chaotic influence sundered the land itself until it wept with fire. The very instant that our graceful friend Triasta Tithis finally laid to rest the greater titan with the power of the holy scepter of the empire, the star shone down upon us all with blinding light. Triesta thought that she could bear her children in the warmth there, but alas. Now the stars revisit that locale with regularity. The fissures in the rock do pose more danger than one ought in light, but a summons to the nest is to be honored. The Glade of Lou. Never have I witnessed an affront to nature, mine and everyone's, quite like the poisoned woods of Limbus Erezek, the Root Titan, in his suffocating influence. I shall leave it to the boastful Underking to tell you more of Erezek's vanquishing, whilst I may tell you something of the glade that he protected, which became my own, for my own genealogy now occupies the soil there, and strives forevermore to prevent Erezek from taking root again. The brambles of the glade are constantly encroaching on themselves, then falling once again to dust. This miraculous cycle, reflected in the starlights piercing through the canopy, needs to be witnessed whenever the stars invite an audience. The Fall of Solium From the top of Mount Elodial, the downside may be seen in its entirety, or at least felt, since so much of the land is shrouded, but that is hardly all. Through a wondrous miracle, there lies upon this highest mountain an inverted fall whose waters crash not toward the sea, rush toward the heavens. We speculate these are the very waters which delivered us, but now bent backward, seeking their return, as do we all. In this phenomenon can freedom be achieved, but only for the chosen when the time is right. This is a path to freedom we cannot traverse, but shall leave open for you so that you may strive for it. The Book of Rites. Much can be said about the sisters of the Arch, whom we banish to the great beyond for deeds irredeemable. Suffice it that the details of their banishment are written in this book. The sisters in the book became inseparable, not unlike the stars, their light, and the infinite darkness that engulfs them. The stars communicate to us, and you, in turn. The words within this book are but an edifice, a simple surface. Look past the text, to the hidden meaning, to that hidden power. The stars above, as they are not mere lights, these are not mere words. If you chance upon the sisters of the arch within their prison here, give them love.